In only a few years, Melvin Gordon went from one of the most exciting running backs in football to an afterthought. So I think it's time to ask the age-old question, what happened? Gordon with a block and a big hole! Melvin Gordon! He's gonna go all the way into the end zone! After a dominant college career in Wisconsin, Melvin was a high-rated prospect going into the 2015 draft. And so even though he was a running back, Mr. Gordon went off the board early. The San Diego Chargers select Melvin Gordon, running back, Wisconsin. Although he was drafted so highly, the starting spot is never guaranteed. But considering that the Chargers needed quite a bit of help in that department, going into the season, Melvin had the starting spot on lock. In 14 games, Melvin put up around 650 with somehow not a single touchdown, as he did good, but not exactly Wisconsin good. Considering how well Melvin did with the Badgers, his rookie performance was a bit underwhelming. So there was quite a bit riding on whether or not he could live up to the hype the following year. And let's just say that he sure did. Running play for Gordon. Trying to loop around. Finds an opening. He's in! Barely under 1,000 yards rushing and 10 touchdowns on the ground, along with a solid 400 and 2 touchdowns through the year, proved that Melvin still had the same spark in him, as he went from being seen as a potential bust to a pro bowler, as a replacement for good old Le'Veon Bell, who I could also probably make one of these videos on. But needless to say, Mr. Gordon did his thing. Keep in mind that those numbers were from only 13 games, so many were curious about what a fully healthy Melvin could do in 2017, now with the team in LA. And I would say that his 1,108 touchdowns on the ground, along with nearly 504 through the year, were able to establish the Wisconsin standout as a legitimate talent. And yet, it seemed like only the beginning of what could be a dominant career in LA. In his best run of the afternoon, cuts it back to the inside, and Gordon sniffing the end zone, and he will get there! After the Chargers picked up Melvin's fifth year option, my man had another year with the team, and so I'm sure he was looking to prove that he'd be worth some money moving forward. But sadly, injuries kept him from popping off big time, although he was still able to put up nearly 910 touchdowns rushing on a career best 5 yards per carry, along with once again just under 504 touchdowns through the year. The fact that Melvin was able to do all that in 12 games is even more impressive than what he did the previous year, but once again was a reminder that injuries were a major problem considering that he played only one full season in his first four years. For most running backs, injuries are a key indicator that production is likely going to slow down with time, so the constant string of them from Melvin was pretty dang concerning. Going into 2019, Melvin changed his jersey number from 28 to 25, the same one that he had at Wisconsin, as he was probably hoping to bring some of that magic to LA, and along with that, hopefully keep him healthy for a full season. But not only just that, that offseason also had a whole bunch of contract disputes, which made sense considering that it was around the same time that guys like Le'Veon Bell, David Johnson, and Todd Gurley all had their own problems with that. Since running backs are so injury prone and usually don't have a long shelf life, teams are usually hesitant to offer big contracts, even for what was then some of the best players in football. Melvin was adamant about wanting to stay with the Chargers considering the fact that they took a risk on him. But let's be honest here, he also wanted to get paid, so he held out until the regular season, but eventually was forced to give in as the Chargers used their roster exemption on him. With all this in mind, in what was almost certainly his last season, it was up for Melvin to show out and once again prove that he deserved to be paid either by LA or somewhere else. But let's just say that it wasn't anything crazy. 608 touchdowns on the ground, along with just under 300 and a touchdown through the year, were pretty dang underwhelming. And yet another sign of the times, as Austin Eckler was pretty much taking his spot before his very eyes. Which wasn't what he probably imagined, but let's just say that things still worked out. Sorry to stop the video, but since you're here, it'd be awesome if you could subscribe, like, turn on post notifications, and comment down below who you think I should make one of these videos on next. But anyways, back to the video. Smack dab in the middle of that offseason, Melvin signed a two-year, $16 million deal to stay in the AFC West with the good old Denver Broncos. Considering the number of injuries, the underwhelming play the previous season, and the fact that he was nearly 27, the contract was pretty solid and gave Melvin a chance to reinvent himself a thousand miles from LA. Going into 2020, Melvin was sharing the backfield with Colorado standout Philip Lindsay and good old Royce Freeman, and yet he was still able to get back to business with nearly 1,009 touchdowns on the ground, even though he didn't get all that much action through the year with just over 150 and a touchdown. Formation with Gordon who has to bounce. Not too shabby of a reintroduction, and proof enough that Melvin was still a stud, even if he wasn't one of the best anymore, and upon that had a bit of tread on his tires. But nonetheless, Melvin was back, and this time he played pretty much the entire season, so it seemed like he found a good spot in Denver. And so with that in mind, he went into 2021 looking to keep the good times rolling. 
This time around, instead of Phillip and Royce, it was a rookie standout from North Carolina in Javante Williams, as it seemed like once again Melvin was getting ushered out of the number one spot, and this time was beginning to become the veteran mentor to good old Javante. Javante Williams takes the handoff, and Williams, nice second effort, still going! Javante Williams! Even though he was splitting the offense with the young fellow, Melvin was still able to put up 900 yards and 8 touchdowns on a pretty solid 4.5 yards per carry, and crazy enough, what was his first full season since 2017. Nonetheless, considering how well he played, it seemed like Melvin was back once again, and so he signed a year deal to stay with the Broncos in 22, but let's just say that it didn't go well. Melvin Gordon. Oh, he fumbled again! And there he goes! In 10 games that year, Melvin put up 302 touchdowns on the ground, along with just over 200 through the year. But a costly 5 fumbles were too much for Denver as they decided to waive Melvin following a very underwhelming performance against Las Vegas. After his costly fumble against Vegas, Melvin pretty much fell off the map, as in one year he went from practically a thousand yard rusher to an afterthought, which led to him quietly signing to the Kansas City practice squad only a week after being released from Denver. It's pretty insane how Melvin went from one AFC East team to another and then to another in three years, but I guess that's what happens when you get injured pretty much every season. Anyways, Melvin signed to the Chiefs practice squad just after Thanksgiving, and even though Kansas City had been dealing with injuries at the position, he didn't play a single snap all season, as he simply just rode the bench for what was the best team in football that year. Butker up, got it! Funny enough, Melvin won a Super Bowl without doing anything. And I mean, honestly, you can't be mad at something like that. So props to Melvin for getting a ring, although it's almost certainly the beginning of the end for his time in the league. You gotta understand that he's nearly 30, had injuries countless times, and hasn't put up a thousand yards rushing since 2017. So needless to say, it seems like Melvin's best days NFL-wise, outside of winning a Super Bowl, are officially behind him. The thing about it is, you can't control injuries, especially when you're getting hit pretty much every single play by 300 pound linemen, so it almost seems like Melvin was destined to deal with some roadblocks. I just guess that in his case, it kept him from dominating like he did at Wisconsin. The whole situation reminds me of what also happened to his colleagues in David Johnson and Todd Gurley, because although injuries don't pick favorites, they seem to happen quite a bit to running backs, especially those who are the centerpieces of the offense. If you're curious as to why so many teams have two or three backs that they cycle through game by game, it's so that they stay fresh, but also to keep these guys healthy year after year, because it's rare that a 300 carry rusher is able to stay on the football field all that long. Nonetheless, Melvin put together a solid career, and upon that was a big part of the teams that he was on, except maybe Kansas City. But all in all, it seems like his time is coming to an end after what was a great career for my man. Anyways, what do you guys think about Melvin? Would he have been a Hall of Famer if he didn't get injured all the time? Or was this just the way it was meant to be? Comment down below your thoughts. Melvin Gordon fell off the face of the earth after he left Denver, but let's just say that getting a Super Bowl ring for doing pretty much nothing is not too shabby in my books. Gordon here, following the block of Tyrell Williams, Gordon cuts it upfield, Melvin Gordon still going, it's still going, Gordon! Thanks for watching the video. If you guys enjoyed, make sure to subscribe, like, turn on post notifications, and comment down below your thoughts. But anyway, see you all soon, and God bless.